Hello everyone, it's Mr. Burns in the weather studio, and we're back for another video. So, today I'm going to do a video that I haven't done for a very long time, and that is going to be the CFS 6 months look ahead video. Um, so, I might have done it on my old weather studio channel, I'm not sure if I've done it on this one. But I've not done it for a very long time, but at least a year probably. Um, so what the CFS six month look ahead vi video is, it's a video that Gav used to do. It's basically what it says on the tin, looking at the uh, the CFS uh, six months look ahead model. So if we go to Gav's with Vid's uh, YouTube channel. Um, he used to, it's one of the videos that Gav used to do, uh, but doesn't do anymore. He, he got fed up of the the CFS model because it was always uh, really. But anyway, it's just a bit of fun, and it video that Gav doesn't do any do some weather content because um, the videos would probably just be covering the same charts and doing the same things as Gav does. So uh, I want to do the CFS six month look ahead like Gav used to do. Um, now he does look at the CFS, but on the only on the live streams, and it's not as great uh, much detail as he used to. Um, I'm also going to look at the CFS, uh, not the CFS, the the CANSIPS model as well. Um, you can see back in 2018 and even 2019, he used to do the CFS uh, six month head video. You can see. Um, November 2014, so he was doing it for a very, very long time. Um, he used to do it every month, and later he also um, uh, used to do look at the Kansits model in tandem as well, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, you can see Kansits Saturday he used to look at the Kansits model as well. You can see it quite. Used to spend quite a long time looking at these models. You can see, like, seventeen minutes or so. I actually looked at the Kansas model for the June twenty twenty month ahead forecast as well. Um, I do miss Gaz Weathervid's month ahead forecasts. They were, you know, they were good. Um, so that's another video I'm doing on my channel. My December. Um, 2022 month ahead forecast video is the first one I've done is uh, doing very well as well uh, it's got over a hundred views on my channel so anyway enough waffling on for me we're gonna start with the CFS we're gonna look at the 700 millibar height anomalies because that's the, the best one to look at and this takes us six months ahead so this takes us all the way through to next June uh, can you believe so we're going to go through each month, months, so we're going to look at the, the height anomaly, the temperature anomaly, and the precipitation anomaly for each month, and then we're going to look at the corresponding, uh, instead of doing it the way Gav used to do it, where he looked at the height anomalies for all the, month, the months, then the temperature anomalies for all the months, and then the precipitation anomalies for all the months, instead we're going to look at, look at the, the temperature height anomaly and precipitation anomaly for each month uh, instead and do it that way. It's a slightly different format of precipitation anomaly just go for some reason um, why that's it's typical uh, but anyway Atlantic Ridge come on are you gonna draw we've lost the blocking signal up to the north so we now just have average pressure around here got no sort of low pressure but we have got high pressure around Scandinavia around uh, Russia as well and in between we've probably got a, a trough uh, but weaker pressure through here so I'm probably bringing the jet stream through like that maybe on a northwest to southeast trajectory um, probably not as cold as December because it's it, we're bringing the air more from off the Atlantic uh, although it's 
probably because of the, the Mid Atlantic Bridge, it's probably from a coal source. It's from probably polar maritime air from Greenland origin. But even so, it's not going to be as cold as December. But um, I think there could become some cold snaps in there at the very least in uh, January. So now let's go. Oh, yeah, now Gavin will normally switch, go to the next month. But now let's have a look at the temperature uh, anomalies for January then. So this is how it's looking. Um, and yeah, it's going for a milder than average month. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Not just for the UK, but through pretty much all parts of Europe, especially northeastern parts of Europe, coming out very mild. Also coming out very mild for Svalbard and for Greenland as well. We're not going exceptionally mild in the UK, but we are going a bit milder than average, around half a degree to one degree above average. What average um, it's comparing it to, though I'm not sure, it might be the, the old and cold 1960 to 1990 average, or it might be a more modern average, such as 1981 to 2010, or even um, 1991 to 2020. So which average it compares it to, I'm not sure. Um, I, have a, I have a feeling it compares it to an older average such as 1961 to 1990 and that's why this model goes um, milder than average most of the time it's just my thought anyway so now we'll have a look at the corresponding precipitation anomaly um, for January 2023 and it's just going for close to average precipitation for the UK and Ireland, uh, wetter than average for France, drier than average uh, for Spain and wetter than average up here maybe returning to a more zonal pattern with westerlies coming through like that, high pressure around here bringing more of a westerly uh, flow, that's what it's implying anyway so now we'll go back to I'm going to go back to the monthly, so it's this one I shouldn't have closed the tab. Should I? Wait for it to load, there we go. So now we'll look at February's uh, precipitation anomaly and um, look away now if you want to call it February because we're going back to um, the old default uh, zone of pattern with low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south, and winds coming in from off the Atlantic, so mild and zonal February, turning milder but also more unsettled, especially for more northern areas closer to uh, the low pressure. As you would expect with a zonal month, temperatures are coming out milder than average, not just for the UK and Ireland, but for pretty much the whole of Europe. And look at parts of um, Russia and Siberia coming out exceptionally mild, around 2 to 3 degrees above average. For the UK and Ireland, we're not as mild as that. We're around sort of um, a degree, maybe 1.5 degrees above average in the south in particular. But um, yeah, a very m mild month coming, if that's right, especially compared to the cold that we've had this December, it will feel very mild in, in comparison if it comes off like that. Um, so this is the precipitation anomaly for February 2023, um, going a little bit wetter than average for northern and western parts of the UK, very typical in a zonal pattern with all the low pressure and westerly low pressure systems. Um, bombarding the western part of Scotland, um, which is typ what typically happens in a zone of power. We've got all the high pressure around here, so it's just suggesting um, that we're pumping through those westerly winds, bringing mild but more unsettled conditions. Next, we'll have a look at the height anomaly for March 2023, and here's how it's looking. Uh, still zonal with low pressure over to the north of the country, high pressure a bit further out in the, the Atlantic this time, so possibly a bit more unsettled uh, for March and still but still quite mild and westerly with the wind coming in from off the Atlantic. 
temperature anomalies for March are coming out like this, so milder than average, coming out to around half a degree to one degree above average. And we're not alone. Most of Europe's coming out milder than average, especially so in for southern and eastern parts of Europe, coming out very, very mild for March. And finally, let's have a look at precipitation. So, yeah, definitely turning more unsettled for March, going uh, wetter than average, not just for the UK, but for many uh, parts of Europe. Um, you have to go to southern Spain and North Africa to find anything drier than average, which implies that we've got high pressure down here and low, the Atlantic is really uh, charging through there with the low pressure. So it looks like the Atlantic is really powering up then as we get into March. Let's go to April now. Uh, and as you can see, all change for April. We get we get high pressure coming through, um, high pressure just to our southwest. We lose the high pressure to the north. We do have a bit of a blocking, a bit of northern blocking uh, up to the north there, but um, not really enough to give us anything cold. And I think with that, winds are just coming in from off the Atlantic. We don't really have any low pressure on this charts uh, at all really uh, apart from this little blue blob in the southern hemisphere but we've, we haven't got any low pressure in the um, the northern hemisphere you'd think there'd be low pressure somewhere we just have these white areas where we have more average pressure but anyway going off the height to normal, it looks like we're just pumping in westerly winds probably not particularly unsettled because there's no obvious drop of low pressure um, so just quite quite mild and, and spring-like for um, for April probably. Uh, let's confirm that with the temperature and precipitation anomaly. So temperature anomaly is actually cooling down a bit for April, just going close to average for the UK and Ireland of course. Um, as you go through spring into summer, westerly stop becoming mild and actually become, become a bit once you get into the summer, westerlies can be a bit cooler than average, uh, if anything. So, so that that's it's probably just as we're going through the spring. Of course, westerlies will be will be milder than average in March, but probably just average in in May. So, so yeah, just going for average temperature anomalies uh, for April there, and precipitation anomalies for April are going close to average a little bit drier around France and Spain implies we've got high pressure around here and we're bringing through those mild westerly winds we'll go through through to May now now we're a very long way out so this is really just for fun but it doesn't look great for May if you want a warm and dry May we've got a trough of low pressure uh, parked over the UK and we've got a, like a ring of high pressure uh, around the UK it's quite a strange pattern but it does happen sometimes um, so you can also have it the reverse as well you've got high pressure over the top of the UK and low pressure surrounding it but th this patterns it tends to the reverse is tends to happen more often where you've got low pressure over the UK and high pressure surrounding it um, the upshot is it probably look quite a cool and unsettled month and with the northern blocking that will probably be pumping cooler air into that trough. Let's have a look at the corresponding temperature and precipitation anomalies. So we've lost the warmer than average. Uh, we're just going close to average. The warmer than average precipitation anomalies um, have gone into off into eastern parts of Europe and Russia and North Africa haven't seen anything cooler than average on these charts so it's very difficult very unusual to see cooler than average conditions on these charts these the CFS really has to be dragged kicking and screaming to show anything below average and let's have a look at the precipitation an anomaly um, and as you would expect with low pressure over the country we are going wetter than average, so implies we've got low pressure around here, and that is why it's wetter than average. 
but it's five months away so it's not really worth uh, worrying about and finally um, we have June and here's how it's looking um, again rather strange high to normally um, we've got high pressure sort of bridging through the Atlantic like that we've got some weaker pressure through here um, might be lining the jet stream up in a bit of a northwest southeast trajectory maybe a little bit cool and showery for June but it's so far away that it really is uh, just for fun um, let's have a look at the corresponding temperature and precipitation anomaly so just going close to average for the temperature for June and precipitation wise here's how it's looking so um, close to average overall probably a bit wetter than average for northern Scotland a bit drier than average for Republic of Ireland but uh, we're, we're so far out there now that it's um, too far away for detail like that we've got some drier than average um, conditions around here low um, so that implies where the high pressure is likely to be most likely to be we've got some low pressure around here so might just be ringing like a flat sort of westerly flow like that uh, but it's it's so far away that it's it's difficult to say so that's how the CFS is looking <sighs> all this talking makes me really thirsty so that's how the CFS is looking um, so next we're going to have a look at CANZIPS so it looks like um, the the cold weather's uh, days are numbered if, with the CFS but we know that the CFS um, favours mild at the best of times so let's have a look at the CANZIPS model now okay and we are back um, right now we'll have a look at CANSIPS for comparison so this is the um, 200 millibar height anomaly I think um, so we have um, ignore the I think you ignore the um, letters on this one it's all about the colour so we've got high pressure we've got all this northern blocking around Greenland and Iceland got a trough of low pressure to our south that's forcing the cold air into the British Isles uh, we're pulling in uh, bitterly cold easterly winds uh, it's a classic uh, cold pattern classic cold winter pattern that we do get in the UK although very rarely these days uh, the westerly pattern is much more common um, for the British Isles it's minus six degrees uh, right out there right now as I'm recording this and it really is bitterly cold um, so let's have a look at the two meter temperature anomaly then for December and no surprise it's going uh, colder than average and not substantially so probably only around sort of a degree below average um, so in reality it's probably around two three four degrees above below average I think the CAT is running around three degrees or so below average now much warmer than average for Greenland though probably could due to all the high pressure up there and um, although high pressure in winter tends to um, tends to produce colder than average conditions at least in the British Isles because of all the cold clear nights that you often get with high pressure but uh, anyway precipitation anomaly is um, going a bit drier than average as you would expect in a colder than average month as uh, cold air doesn't hold as much moisture as uh, warm air so next we're going to um, January 2023 we can go out uh, 12 months with this we can go all the way out to November next year but we're not going to go that far out we're just going to go up to June uh, That that's um, far enough out and really once you get past month two with this it's just for fun really except even month one it is, is just for fun really um, 
So I think now we want to go to, I think it's the ML, MSLP anomaly. I found that's the best one to use for the height anomaly. It shows up the colors the best. So for January, um, it's going different um, to the CFS. Instead of a zone of signal, um, and the blocking receding, we've still got the northern blocking in the mid latitude in the in the high latitudes we've got still got the low pressure to the south of the UK bringing in the winds from the east so that still looks like a cold and block pattern to me uh, that blow and blocking pumping the cold air down into the British Isles uh, let's have a look at the um, the two meter temperature anomaly then for January and it's not going as cold, it's going for close to average temperatures uh, there with the model. Although, with that height anomaly, you would expect a colder than average month for the British Isles, but the model's going for close to average temperatures there, maybe even ever so slightly milder than average, can you believe? And let's have a look at the uh, precipitation anomaly and. Um, very difficult to make out, if anything, probably ever so slightly uh, drier than average. Let's have a look at February uh, then. Uh, and it's all changed for February, the high pressure in the high latitudes being replaced by loads of low pressure um, we've got high pressure not in its usual position actually you'd usually expect high pressure to be around the, the Azores and Spain but it's pulled out into the middle of, middle of the Atlantic the upshot is so we're probably pr pumping up uh, winds from a southwesterly direction from off the Atlantic so that looks like a mild and also much more unsettled pattern there. Uh, let's confirm that then with the temperature and precipitation anomaly. Uh, so we are going a little bit milder uh, than average there, probably around a degree or so above average. You might, you probably expect it to be milder than that, uh, going off the the uh, the height anomaly. Um, and let's have a look at the uh, the precipitation anomaly. So, um, yeah, going a little bit wetter than average there, as you would expect uh, with all that low pressure out in the Atlantic and bringing up those uh, southwesterly winds. Let's go through to March then. And uh, this is how uh, March is looking. So in March, um, we get high pressure uh, ridging through the country like that. Um, low pressure to our south around North Africa, quite unusually, and around the Azores. And we've got low pressure up in the high latitudes. Upshot is the jet stream will be pushed off to the north. So that's look, that looks like a mild, dry and uh, pleasant spring-like uh, March there. You could envisage a lot of pleasant spring-like weather with that uh, height anomaly. Uh, the temperature anomaly is going uh, slightly milder than average, probably around uh, maybe half a degree or so uh, above average. Come on, scroll down, uh, there we go. And let's have a look at the precipitation uh, anomaly. And uh, yeah, if anything, it's difficult to make out, but probably slightly drier than average. If anything, you would expect a drier than average month with that uh, height anomaly. Um, let's go to April now, it's month four, so it really is just for fun, but we'll just see uh, what the model is showing. And we have low pressure to the north, high pressure ridging through like that, and low pressure 
to our south, quite an unusual surrounded by low pressure to our south and our north, but the upshot is I think the jet stream will be pushed off to our north like that and, and we would be relatively dry and uh, mild with that April. Let's confirm that though with the temperature and precipitation anomalies. So, um, Temperature anomalies uh, slightly milder than average once again. Come on. And precipitation anomalies. Um, slightly uh, drier than average, I would say. Let's have a look at May. So in, we're at month um, five now. So it really is just a snapshot at what the model is showing. Uh, but we'll have a look at it anyway. Um, and this is showing low pressure over and to the north of the country. Um, high pressure out in the middle of the Atlantic. Probably bringing through a westerly flow. Could be quite unsettled that um, in May. Let's... Let's see what the temperature and precipitation anomaly have to say about that. Um, so temperature anomaly, again, slightly milder than average, probably about half a degree or so above average. And um, precipitation anomalies, if anything, coming out slightly wetter uh, than average. And finally, let's go to June. So this is early summer now. Uh, can you believe? And we'll just see, quickly see what the model's showing for June. Um, high pressure out to our west, a mid-Atlantic ridge. Um, you can see low pressure out to our east. So maybe winds coming down from sort of... Uh, a cool sort of northwesterly or maybe even northerly direction so maybe quite a cool um, start to the summer there let's have a look at um, the temperature anomaly uh, coming out ever slightly milder than average and uh, precipitation anomalies uh, coming out uh, very close to average maybe ever so slightly wetter than average if anything but it's six months out so it's it's very very unreliable so there we go then that's the the CFS and CANSIPS uh, six months look ahead done it's the first one of these I've done for a very very long time Gav used to do the video this video on his channel now no longer does those uh, CFS and Kansas videos. Instead, he does a sh much shortened down version on his live streams. But I wanted to, to bring you the full version that Gav used to do. So it has been a long, quite a long video, nearly 30 minutes. I was expecting to keep this to around 15, 20 minutes, but it's surprising how long um, these uh, model forecasts take, these weather forecast videos take. They always take longer than you expect them to but uh, that's fine I enjoy doing the videos so so yeah um, that's your CFS and can sips uh, six months look ahead so I hope you enjoyed this video please hit the like button if you enjoyed it um, subscribe for, no for more videos hit the notification bell so you won't miss out on the next video and um, yeah, comment down below if you have any video requests, any particular model you want me to forecast, you want me to look at, or any particular time period or location you want me to forecast for. Comment down below and I'll see what I can do. Um, Gav is back from his holidays in New York, so I won't be doing, won't be uploading as regularly uh, because there'd, there'd be no point. I'd just be repeating what Gav will be, be, be saying, but. Um, but yeah, I am planning to do a winter forecast video looking at the looking at a few long range models, probably CFS, CAN, SIPS and JMA. Um 
I did do that a couple of years ago, forecasting the winter. I, I did get it a bit wrong. I forecasted the winter to be milder than average by about a degree. Um, I think it forecasted precipitation to be close to average. So this was for winter 2020 stroke 2021. Um, in reality, it was the winter was slightly cold, colder than average. Um, and it was a very wet winter as well. So I did get that forecast a bit wrong. Um, but there we go. Um, Gav has got his winter forecasts wrong plenty of times. So, you know, we're only humans. So, so yeah. Um, anyway, that's... Uh, 30 minutes and 34 seconds, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.